Vectors are a great way for scaling art to print at any size. However, sometimes our artwork didn't start in a vector format. Today we'll look at three tools to convert your images to vectors, and best of all, they're all free. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and a common question I get from a lot of people these days is how to scale their artwork for print on demand. A lot of times they'll have low resolution JPEGs or PNGs, and they'll want to convert it to vectors so they can scale it for bigger formats. So today we'll look at three tools that are free, and I've linked to them in the description below. They're Adobe Express, Creative Fabrica, and Vectorizer AI. So let me give you a brief demo on how they all work. So here I have Adobe Express, and all these tools today will be online tools. So it says I can upload my photo here. It also says free forever, so hopefully Adobe will stick by that promise. So let me click this button. And I can put JPEGs or PNGs. I'll browse to my computer. And let's do this image here. Now there aren't really a lot of options here, but you get the result, and then you can click download. We'll look at the actual results later. Let's move on to the next one, Creative Fabrica. So here we have Creative Fabrica, and it works pretty much the same as the Adobe one. There aren't really any options. I can just click and upload my image, and it'll tell me that it's processing. And when it's done, I can just click on the button and I can download it as an SVG. So finally, let's look at Vectorizer AI. Now this one says free while in beta. I don't know how long the beta is going to last. Hopefully it'll be a while. And if they do charge for it when the beta is over, I'm hoping it'll be something affordable. But this one starts out the same. We can drag an image in and we can upload it. And you'll see it's processing. So this one actually has much more sophisticated controls than the other tools. And I won't go into all of them here, but you can see when you download, you actually have tons of options for how you want the SVGs to look. Just the basic algorithms and the, the different techniques it does for creating the shapes. Now for this video, I just used the default options for all of these because I thought we should test how it works with minimal effort. So there are options here that you can change, but I just left them as they are. But if you like to tweak things, there's lots of little settings here you can play with. Now I'll briefly just mention Canva here because I know some of you like that program. They claim to have a free image converter. However, actually for downloading the SVGs, you have to have the subscription account. So even though it says free, it's not technically free. So I didn't include it in this list. But if you have a Canva subscription, you can give it a shot and see how it works. So just to explain the source images, I generated these with Midjourney, and I tried to give increasing levels of complexity, starting from something very simple. This just kind of has some line work here. And I started to add more colors and a little more gradients. And towards the end, I started to do more of the harder situations, which are more painterly looks and illustrations. But we'll look at these in more detail as I go through the demos. I didn't do any extra upscaling. I just did the basic one level of upscaling in Midjourney. So all these images are about 800 to 1200 pixels on a side. If I zoom in, you can see kind of the level of detail there is. So there's definitely some jagginess here and we'll see how the programs deal with that. Okay, let's start with this example of a cat and it kind of has some simple line work. This is the kind of thing where we would expect if a vector program can do anything, it should be able to do this one fairly well. At a glance, it definitely looks really good. I'm happy with the result. You can see that it did leave out some of the shadows here and that'll kind of be a pattern with the Adobe one. Sometimes it will not include the colors. But if we zoom in, we can see we have a lot of really nice shapes here. The whiskers came in really well. Let's look at our source image. I was concerned these whiskers might not translate well being low resolution, but actually we got really nice sharp designs here. The shapes are pretty simple. You can see a lot of nice curves here, not a million points that we have to worry about. So besides the fact that it missed these shadows, I think it did a really good job. And if you were really concerned about these shadows, you could definitely add them in pretty easily yourself. Now we look at Vectorizer and of course we can see that it did have the shadows here. So it picked that up. Let's see how the whiskers came in. Whiskers are looking pretty good. Not getting too many points. Looks like the shapes are relatively simple. We have kind of this effect going on, so it seems like there's multiple layers for some reason, but I think that's fine. I don't think that's a big issue. So overall, I'm really liking the way Vectorizer did it. Now let's look at Creative Fabrica. At this level, it seems pretty good, but as we zoom in, I start to notice some problems. It's having a lot of issues with the whiskers. It seems like it picked up some of that pixelization here. And we're also getting multiple levels of black here. You see this gray stretches here. It did get the shadows, so that's nice. But again, we're still just seeing a lot of these really sharp edges. So for this example, Creative Fabrica definitely had the roughest output. Okay, so we added another layer of complexity here. We still have a cartoon shape, but we added some color. However, Adobe seems to not like what we've done. So it just said no to the color. So there's no color information here at all. I ran it through twice just to see if it was a bug and it came out the same each time. So there's something about this image that it really just didn't like. So maybe Adobe had some problem with the contrast here. I'm not really sure what happened, but I guess this wouldn't really be usable for our purposes. Vectorizer AI seems to have really nailed it quite well. Let's zoom in here. 
Seems like we have a lot of really nice shapes, a lot of nice good sharp edges that match our original image. With the tufts of hair and that type of thing, it didn't get too confused. The shapes seem to be really well defined, so if I wanted to change colors of things, I could do so. I guess if I wanted to change colors of the shirt, I could do select, same, fill color. I give them like a green coat. So that's a sign of a good vector conversion when you can really grab those shapes and quickly change them to what you want to be. So now we have Creative Fabrica and let's zoom in. Once again, I'm seeing lots of sharp edges here. Lots of distortions and right angles at random places. So I think once again, Creative Fabrica is just kind of adding in lots of these extra artifacts that aren't helping us too much. So in this example, the color complexity has been increased a little bit. We have more gradients. I'll zoom in here. You can see more subtle tonal shifts. So let's look at what Adobe did so we can zoom in. And we can see that it did an okay job, but there's a problem that I started to notice with the Adobe conversions, which is that you often get these spaces between the colors. So the shapes aren't quite coming together. We're getting a lot of these gaps. So you can see on the left, this is what the original image would look like. And then over here on the right, we have the Adobe conversion. It's doing a pretty good job of selecting colors, but it's not really joining them together very well. So I don't think we'd be able to use this one from Adobe. Let's look at Vectorizer now, and if I zoom in, it does have much better areas where the colors come together. I'm not seeing any gaps or anything like that. So if we compare these two areas, we can see it looks pretty good. Now we have a gradient here in this original shape. Something I noticed for all these programs is that they never really try to add gradients. They always put blocks of solid colors in areas. And SVGs do technically support gradients, so it should be something that's there, but I guess they just haven't added it in yet. It might just be too complicated to add it in. But again, all this detail here looks really good. I mean, this looks like a great cartoon style here. I really like this line work. Everything seems to be pretty well defined. And now we have Creative Fabrica, so let's zoom in. And this is the part where we still see a lot of that jaggedness. And it almost starts to become like impressionistic in a way, the way it just kind of puts different shapes together. I do like the way it packs in colors in some places, but still it just doesn't feel sharp enough. So it has an interesting artistic effect, but it certainly isn't really looking like a vector version of our original image. Okay, so now we have a really cool example, which is kind of this sprite sheet almost of ice cream cones. This would be a really good asset for a video game or something. So let's look at the original ones. You can see we have these different ice cream cones with details here. Lots of swirls going on. Some of them have these tiny little bits of candy in it. So let's see how Adobe handled it. So in the Adobe case, once again, when you zoom in, we're getting lots of spaces between these areas of color here. It does seem like a very simple design, so that's good. Maybe if you put something like behind it, it wouldn't be noticeable. So let me try that real quick. I'll send it to the back. So, you know, it helps it a little bit, but still it's extra effort. So it's kind of a downside of it. Let's look at some of these other details here. So here I'm comparing the Adobe cone on the right to the original source on the left. It's missing some of the details. It would've been nice if it kind of added a little bit of that in. We'll see how the other ones deal with that strawberry there. Overall, it's not bad, but again, these kind of gaps are just very frustrating. All right, let's look at Vectorizer. So zooming in, this looks really nice. I'm very impressed with this here. I mean, look at these swirls. These are great. Lots of subtle colors going on here. It really picked up that differentiation. The strawberry looks nice. Let's compare it to the original one. So here we have the Vectorizer one. And I really like what it did with the strawberry here. Picked up some of those little seeds and kind of the shadows. And now let's look at Creative Fabrica. So I'll zoom in. We're again getting that kind of jagged edge part. Did get some detail of the strawberry there. It's almost like an expressionist style that it's giving us. So it's not literally what the original image was, but it kind of has a cool look to it. So probably one of the better ones of Creative Fabrica so far. For this example, I tried to generate something that was kind of more like a t-shirt design, like a maybe like a beachfront or something like that. And here's my source image here. You can see it kind of generated some nonsense text. In real life, you would just delete this and kind of put your own text there. But we have some interesting issues here. Lots of uh, leaves with the uh, trees and things like that. So let's see how it worked in Adobe. So at this level, it doesn't look too bad. Once again, if we zoom in though, we start to get our familiar problem. Lots of gaps between the shapes. I think if you're gonna put this on a t-shirt, that'd be pretty annoying to have these type of gaps. We have the ocean here, still has lots of gaps here. Let's look at Vectorizer. So here's the Vectorizer one, let's zoom in. And this one looks really clean. Let's compare the clouds to the original one. So it did pretty well with the clouds. There's kind of a lot of noise in the original image, but it did a pretty good job of kind of making those separations. The water looks nice. Let's see what the trees look like. Lots of detail in here. The text seems like it'd be pretty easy to delete. 
And if you really want to delete text in an image like this, I would just erase it out of the original image and then vectorize it. In fact, you should probably make as many changes as possible in your original image and then vectorize it. It'll be easier that way. And now we'll look at Creative Fabrica. And as per usual, we have our kind of a abstract impressionism here a little bit, almost like a Monet painting. It's pretty cool, but I don't know if it really helps you upscale your image, which is kind of what you want to do with a vector. Okay, now for something definitely more painterly. Let's zoom in here. This is the original image. It's kind of a castle in this wreath setting here. Lots of little details going on. Let's see how Adobe did it. So the Adobe one's looking pretty good. We're not actually seeing a lot of those gaps that we saw before. I'm seeing a couple here and there, but not many. You can see there's little points there, little points there. Actually, now that I look closer, I can see this one actually has lots of tiny little gaps and intersections. So these little white spaces. So yeah, we're getting the gaps more in the corners and stuff here. Let's now look at vectorizer, so I'll zoom in. Once again, it seems to be very nice and clean. Getting some pretty amazing detail with this water here and these stairs. I think it did a really good job with that. Colors seem pretty solid. And again, we're getting lots of nice definition with the uh, shapes here. And if we look at Creative Fabrica, let's zoom in. We're still getting the same look that we usually get from them. Not a lot of detail down here in the water. So side by side, you can really see a good example of what's happening here. Definitely a little rougher with Creative Fabrica. This one's kind of more like a sticker effect. It has kind of the white outline on the edge. It'd be nice for like doing a cutout of something. So you can see my original image has pretty good detail. And Adobe did a pretty good job. So if I zoom in, I'm not seeing a lot of the gaps I saw in the other one. In the original image, we have these lines of hair. Let's see how they look here. There's some jaggedness here. I didn't quite smooth it out a lot. So we see kind of lots of rough edges. Let's compare it to Vectorizer. So we just saw the hair in Adobe. So yeah, Vectorizer did a really nice job of just smoothing out the hair. And let's look at Creative Fabrica. Again, very kind of rough edges here. It's not doing well with these long straight lines. So kind of the usual problems. Okay, now we're dealing with stuff that probably shouldn't even be vectorized to begin with, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. So here's an image. You can see it has definitely more of a painterly feel to it. There's lots of very subtle color transitions. It's not really the type of thing you would vectorize, but some people try it. So let's see what happens here. So with Adobe, we're kind of having our familiar old problem again, which is it wouldn't look half bad if it wasn't for all these spaces between the colors. Lots of gaps here. It's interesting, but is it better than your original PNG? Not really. I would just upscale the original PNG and use that. Vectorizer starts to look a little bit better. You're still going to get banding, though, with the colors. So you can see here in the face. So this is probably about as good as it could get with that technique. And then we have Creative Fabrica. So let's look at this here. I do like aspects of it. It looks more like a Photoshop filter than like the original image. And it is better than the Adobe version, which had all the spaces in there. From a zoomed out perspective, I actually think Creative Fabrica is doing a better job than Vectorizer on this one. I'm liking the way the colors work more. And finally, we have this kind of anime example of a karate wolf, which I thought was pretty cool. We can zoom in. Definitely nice detail here. I mean, it's low res, but you can see this could be a very nice picture. Lots of drapery with the uh, outfit. So let's see how they did. All right, so let's look at Adobe. And again, we have our issue here with the gaps between the colors. If it wasn't for that, I think it would look really solid. You can see how it built up lots of subtle color here. So I think that's interesting. So again, not bad from Adobe, but unfortunately we have these gaps in there. So now we have Vectorizer and let's look at this. Yeah, I think this did a really good job. Again, very impressed with the Vectorizer work. Love these thick lines in here. I don't know how Vectorizer works, but it seems like it just makes like decisions about things. Like it knows what line work is and it just knows how to put things together better. It doesn't have these wishy-washy borders like some of the other programs. Color decisions down here are very nice. Some subtle changes here. We have that and that. This is definitely something that would be production worthy and you could increase the size to whatever you wanted. And finally, Creative Fabrica. And it does look better than Adobe again. So I think it does a really good job with these shadows and subtle color transitions, but it's less confident with these lines. Let's compare it to Vectorizer. So this is what I meant by the confidence. Look at, if we look at Creative Fabrica, you see it's just kind of all jagged along the edge here. Now if you look at Vectorizer, it's just like, boom, all of it, one continuous line. So if you have these more complicated illustrations, I would definitely give Creative Fabrica and Vectorizer a try. You might be pleased with some of the more complicated color decisions of Creative Fabrica, whereas Vectorizer seems to be really good at this line work. So my final verdict is that Vectorizer AI clearly wins in most cases. Hopefully it stays free for a while, and when it does have a paid subscription, it will be relatively affordable for people. Adobe is good in a pinch for a simple line work, but it definitely starts to fall apart when you have complicated areas of color intersecting each other. 
Creative Fabric, on the other hand, seems to have problems with lots of situations. However, if you want kind of a more expressive, artistic look, it might be something worth looking at, especially for more complicated paintings. If you have any questions about these tools, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.